What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm here at Joe Boo's Man Cave Number 2 here at the historic Red Brick House, and we are here talking about a little bit of history. And I will say that the last three days of my life, I will not be getting back. And it has been a complete waste of time wasting, waiting for the Dallas Cowboys to do something, anything at all. But the Cowboys are winning. They are the last team, the last team to sign a free agent that's not on their team. So there's that. And I also have the mailman who is taking the day off from delivering the mail to you guys. Brian. What's up? What up? What up? What up? Good afternoon, everybody. What's Man. going on? Well, I've started the stream about five minutes early, actually, or 10 minutes late, whichever way you want to look at it, because originally it's scheduled for 3.30. <clears> but, <throat> but, you know, my fat ass needed to eat. You know, fat people don't get fat by not eating. I, I tell you that. So <laughs> I had to take care of that <laughs> issue right there. We got so much stuff that's going on that has absolutely positively nothing about improving the team. And I dare say that things are getting ugly. Besides just me, because we know I'm ugly. Um, your thoughts yeah. so far about what you've been seeing on uh, and going on and the happenings of the Cowboys? Well, you know, again, I got... I would have been okay, Mark, if... The owner hadn't done what he did. Now, shout out to you. You were saying all along it was all, it was false. <laughs> they were going to do what they normally do. And shout out to you for sticking to that. I said, ah, no, maybe something's good's going to come out of it. Maybe it's going to be a different year. Maybe, just maybe. And it wasn't a different year. But if the owner didn't say we we're going all in, then maybe I would have been a little bit better. But he did, and we should have known as soon as Catboy the next day tried to walk it back and go, wow, maybe I don't what know, he meant I to don't say. I do year that Jerry hasn't been all in. It's like, yeah, man, I, I, here's the deal. Somebody has to tell Jerry that we don't want to listen to him talk anymore. Okay? Somebody has to tell him. All the butt munchers that cover the team. And listen, I know you guys have a tough job. You can't say anything critical or you'll lose your job, probably. For the most part. He likes you talking about him, but you can't question his son, Catboy. Um, <laughs> just stop listening to him. Because anything that comes out of his mouth is like a waste of my time anymore. And Stephen Jones, well, you've done what you always have done. Nothing. We should have known. The first couple of days, they're going to make moves, everybody. Nobody's saying, uh, I'm not upset at that part. They're going to make moves. They're just not going to be players with the big fish. That's just it. They never will be with this philosophy. Can you win with it? Yeah, but you got to hit it. <laughs> Pause. You got to hit it perfect. Whereas sometimes you just go for the big fish mm -hmm. and... The talent just overcomes sometimes. So, you know, we'll see how this all plays out. Well, I tell you what, Brian. I think I actually know what happened. Okay? I, I think I actually know what happened. Do you know what happened here? What's up? The Dallas Cowboys missed the memo that you can start negotiating with free agents. Mm-hmm. Two days they before. know the memo. Are you sure about that? Because they, they might know be the memo. Here. They knew they, they, they weren't they buying. They don't here. want to look Cal at the effing menu until it's time to eat. <laughs> they don't want to look at the menu. And, Ooh, look at that. I'm Ooh, trying to toss them a bone here that they missed the memo that you can start two days ago. They're waiting until four o'clock today to do. They something. do that with everything. They do that with their. You know, contracts, but hold that thought. I'm going to go live on my channel, so just uh, I'll give you a thumbs up or you can unmute. Okay, or I'll just show right.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Game time, Brian, otherwise known as the mailman, coming to you live from my mama's <laughs> basement as we get ready. We're just a short 14 minutes away from the start of the official free agent frenzy, even though we all know what the heck is going on. What's up, Mark Combs? How are you? Um, I've been better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be happy here. But, hey, looking at highlights of Derrick Henry on the NFL Network, 10-plus rushing touchdowns in, in six straight seasons wasn't good enough for the Cowboys. Yeah, it's, it's great. Not, yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, so we, we have can do better. all hell breaking loose. And I, I'm, I'm going to just I'm going to give plausible deniability to the Cowboys because I still believe in Santa Claus that they just did not get the memo. The Emma, the NFL set everybody the rules on this year signing free agents and things, and they didn't send it to the Cowboys that they could start signing free agents before four o'clock today. Because yeah, we, we might just crazy. see. Yeah, hey, look, if we see a signing, you know, before five o'clock, we know that that was the case, right? They they didn't know they could start early. <clears throat> How else could you explain this? Because yep. they've done nothing. They haven't even signed any of their own free agents, other than the long snapper. So there's that. Yes, yes, it is. It's um, par for the course, Mark. But again, I, like I was telling everybody on your channel, um, I would have been okay with it. I didn't expect it. I never expect the first couple of days until the owner says we're going all in, you know, and then we should have known when Catboy tried to walk it back the next day. And um, we kind of got our hopes up uh, in the end. There's still a lot, a lot of players out there for us. A lot of very interesting pieces, maybe smarter pieces, mm -hmm. like a lot might say. Sometimes you just want that shiny new little toy, or, you know, shiny toy. Though that's the only thing. I think us cowboy fans are, or we want a championship so bad. But the next best thing is to get that next jersey, right? I'm not. We're not just gonna go buy any jersey. We want to go buy a Derrick Henry jersey, and what number is he going to wear? Well, we don't get to buy that jersey. Well, okay. And let, let me deal with this one right here. Let's deal with the elephant get him. real quick. T. Brown says, Cap destroy Dakota needs to get out of Dallas. He has a sexual assault to deal with. So, a couple of things on that, okay? We've got the fan who had the attorney for the ones that were allegedly extorting the money on their channel, uh, you know, on the fan, in which case some of us new media, a.k.a. morons, kind of <laughs> connected the dots and said, you know, this is kind of like what happened with Des Bryant, where, and, and matter of fact, any big contract that we've had with any players, it's funny how all of a sudden they become the bad guy. Have you noticed yeah, that? Yeah, right. You know how Zeke Elliott was, you know, <laughs> we're not going to reset the market and everything else. And all the things that happened with Zeke. Remember with D-Law? Where he literally had to say, I'm not getting my shoulder worked on until I get my contract. Right? And they screwed the pooch on that. And Des yeah. Bryant, we heard about the tape out there that might be ten times worse than <laughs> Ray yeah. Rice. Whatever happened in that tape? Oh, they're still looking for it. So it's just like they're, yeah, they're still looking for that. Just like they're looking for the other, you know, the uh, the OJ killer, right? They're so, still looking for the, uh, yeah, so yeah, you know, who Law killed uh, Ron and and, and uh, my man Jay Tuck. Kind of said, you know, it's kind of funny how all this stuff happened when we're trying to do a contract for Dak and a whole Twitter battle, you know just has been going on between 105 the fan and basically calling all of us in the new media morons and i say moron power unite okay and uh, <laughs> i think we actually when you think about it i think we are actually beginning to put a little bit of pressure on the king i Jared. think so i think you're right i think and we need to continue to do that Yep. You know, we need to continue to do that. 
Let me say hello to Clouds Coffee, Short Dog, Lady Libra in the house, Crystal, Caramel Corn, Sheila Neal. Oh, Sheila, what's up, Brian? Shout out to your commanders, Jeff Lee, SSL TV. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get to Adam there, SSL TV. Clouds, Coif, uh, Clouds Coffee says he loves 105 The Fan. Uh, Dwayne Sweeney in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, Short Dog, Matt in the house. Um, so I, I was talking to you earlier, and I was talking about Adam, and I can't pronounce his name. Adam. Schefter? No, 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 no. This is an Alan, Alan, P-R-A-S-I-F-K-A. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I know where you're going with this. He is the right hand. He's the hand of the Get a load of this, everybody. Of king, okay? <laughs> Settle in for this one. This is, okay, and this is shout out to uh, a Dak uh, Attack, okay? Dak Attack, yeah. Dak Attack, who got this from your boy Nix. So shout out, actually, to Nix for promoting it. And then, of course, shout out to Dak Attack for seeing it. And literally, he pulled a gun out. He, he literally was just like, man, this is like, I hate this team. But he's talking about... Adam Pacifica, Pacifica, maybe. Oh, oh yeah, Adam Pacifica. Pacifica. Okay, that's who you were talking about. Yeah. You know oh yeah, Adam Pacifica. He's the long haired guy. Okay, uh, Adam's the not, guy not who was Manning. Lincoln. Well, let me just give you a quick one. Adam, Pas I don't. I'm not against Adam Pacifica until I heard this story, but whatever. Um, he's the guy that's Manning the office while they're on the yacht. Adam Pacifica handles okay. most of the contracts. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one that's handling. That's what I, I mean. I had heard okay. that part. Adam's so, so in the here's, office here's my fielding thing. the calls. Here's my thing, okay? When I look at the Eagles, and they have signed Jalen Hurts and got him locked up last year, right? They're paying him $11 plus million more a year than Dak Prescott, right? They went out and traded and picked up an A.J. Brown, right? Mm-hmm. They ended up signing, some people say, the best running back that was available in free agency in Saquon Barkley. And then they have Devontae Smith, right? What do you think? DJ Gardner Johnson. No, 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 no. Just these four players. Oh, uh, okay. What do you think these four players are costing on their cap this year? Well, I know because you told me, but tell everybody. $36 million. Think about that. Think about what a general manager who knows how to handle the cap can do with that kind of talent. There you have that's it. That's pretty impressive. And we're sitting here and saying Dak Prescott is a cap up, destroyer Rob? with a $59 million cap number. So when you – and if, if – my thing is this. If this was the only contract that was an outlier that was ass-ass, then I would say, yeah, it's just Dak Prescott. But what about Zeke Elliott's when they signed him to a $90 million contract? Oh, there's, yep. Mm hmm. Well, we can go into a lot of the contract if you want. Look what at the Michael Jim Gallup Smith? guy. We're getting ready to cut a guy who we're going to have More dead, dead money. money. Every uh, you one can go Jalen Smith. Every one of these contracts that they've done have left a wake of dead money in them. Terrence Steele. I get, uh, you know, I love Terrence Steele, but, but <laughs> you have to wonder. You know, it's eighty-four million dollars for his contract. What's up, Thomas? So, here's my thing. I got no problem with Stephen Jones. You know, being the head guy. Okay, I don't either. How about you hire somebody underneath of you? Yes, who knows what they're doing. Now, I've got nothing against Adam. Okay. Yeah, Adam's a nice enough guy. A, a nice but, enough, but but you know what? I'm a nice enough guy too, but I shouldn't be managing the Pentagon. Right, right, exactly. You know, I, being nice has nothing to do with it. In fact, well, I want somebody who's kind of shrewd knows what the hell they're doing. Because I can tell you what Tex Stram used to do. He used to be able to get these contracts and stuff done and be able to make them so it worked for the team. Now, what was Adam Pacifico? Okay, so, he used to Adam, so, so here's, here's the resume. And I think you were the one who told me that Stephen Jones has a degree in chemical engineering. Yeah, he's a he. Yeah, he's an engineer. He's a lot smarter than I am in real life. But yeah, but, football smarts. Okay, eh. you know eh. Jason Garrett went to Princeton, but how, how did that work? How did Jason? Yeah, Garrett, right. Yeah, so, yeah. So here's mm -hmm. the thing. 
here's the resume. And Adam, you know, listen, I ain't got nothing against you, man, I'm, uh, at all. And he no. had a lot of on-the-job training. But, okay, so from June 2022 until now for a year and 10 months, he is the Senior Director of Salary Cap and Players Contracts. He is answers directly to Stephen Jones. He is the guy who is helping to manage the salary cap and the players' contracts. So before that, he was starting in 2002, August 2002, he was a player personnel. So he still has that role along with senior director. That's so, where I know him so as player personnel, Adam Pacific. To negotiate players' contract and manage the salary cap. So that's what he has been doing since August 2002. Before that, before that, from July 1999 to February 2002, he was a football equipment manager, coaching assistant for quarterbacks coach, and assisted uh, Joe Ferguson for two years and David Lee for one year more and volunteered as the equipment manager. Mm. Okay, so 1998 to 2002. While he was doing that job, in January 2000 to 2002, he worked for um, Marketplace Grill, recruited to opening the team as uh, recruited the opening teams as a corporate trainer. Repeated top ranking nice. in sales among all servers responsible for maintaining a quality staff and resolve any customer service issues. And this, my friend, is his LinkedIn page. So his education, University of Arkansas, 1999 to 2002 got a BS in mechanical engineering. While he was doing that, he was an equipment manager that was a volunteer, an assistant coach, and he also worked at Marketplace Grill training servers and then gets hired out of college then by the Cowboys in June, tw I'm sorry, in August 22 as a player personnel person. Mm -hmm. I have no problem, listen, and, and I don't, don't get me wrong, everybody. I am not trying to kill the man. If anything, hey, bro, I like the way you did that, man. You went from college being a volunteer equipment manager and working in a restaurant to being player personnel for a multi-billion dollar company. Dude, <laughs> I, I, I love that. But yeah, that's impressive. Here's the thing. Hey, though. Matt Batten. How so are you, you buddy? Steven Jones, who's a chem chemical engineer, what on his resume says he knows anything about contracts in the NFL, negotiating contracts, or salary cap? You should have somebody. All I'm saying is, is hey, keep Adam where he is, okay? Keep Steven Jones where he is. But how about hire somebody who knows how to actually manage the cap? Because this is the same issue you've had as long as Adam's been on there. This is not like it's just Dak Prescott's contract is the one that's screwy. Look at ones like Jay Ratcliffe, uh, Marion Barber, uh, uh, Miles Austin. You can go down the line of all these contracts that have been bad for the last 25 years. I'm not putting this on Adam. Not putting this on Adam, not trying to throw him under the bus, but you got to start looking at this and saying, how is it that the Philadelphia Eagles every year can sign all these players, some of which work, some of which don't, move on with them, and still are able to sign more of them the next year? Right. And yet, we let players go. We let players yeah. go and have to replace them with bottom-tier guys and still are in the same space the next year. This has to be it makes no sense to me. Not at all. You, you got to recognize that we got a problem here. We don't know how to manage the cap the way it needs to be managed. Yeah. And you, this whole thing. Think about this. This was, 
and I don't mean to, I'll, I'll let you talk here. Cause no, I'm good, man. I got to find this because this is, this is crazy. And, and if you, anybody, you know the movie Groundhog Day, right? Yes. We are living in Groundhog Day, bro. <laughs> we are literally living. Okay. L- let me read you. This is the laundry hat from last year at training camp. As the Cowboys gear up for the 23 season in Oxnard, California, the front office is behind the scenes working towards new contracts for CeeDee Lamb and Zach Martin and laying the groundwork for star Micah Parsons. We know this because they were able to put pen to paper to get uh, Trayvon Diggs under contract. This is when I was like, oh, Cowboys actually getting stuff done. Remember? The players they are working on now, though, could be a little bit more difficult due to some current contracts that aren't doing the Cowboys any favor salary cap-wise. So let's think about this. We were talking about Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb getting their deals done last year. And we haven't gotten them done yet. What has yeah. happened since last year? Nothing. The price has gone up. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. The price has gone up. And so you're sitting here now as now, uh, you know, wide receivers' money is busting out even further and all that, right? Edge rushers. You know, Chris Jones just signed his big deal. And so guess what? Micah Parsons' number's going up, okay? So this was about three bad contracts that the Cowboys had that they were dealing with. These three contracts in particular should have been done in other ways. It's impossible to blame the player for this, obviously. The brunt of the blame falls solely on the Jones family and their continued insistence on dragging out negotiations or just flat out waiting too long to initiate the negotiation process. Mm -hmm. Now they're sitting there with three contracts that may hinder them from getting others done. So let's take a look at the three worst contracts the Cowboys currently have on the roster. So think about that. This is not today. This is last year. We still haven't addressed these problems from last year. Tony Pollard. If you want an example of Cowboys' wait-and-see approach, look no further than Tony Pollard's contract this season. While the majority of the running backs in the league are averaging around $6 million in 23, Pollard will make $10.1 million guaranteed after signing the franchise tag tender. No one reason they had to wait was due to their horrible contract with Zeke Elliott that tied up cap space with him on the roster. Do you feel like we're it, it's Groundhog Day? Oh, it's Groundhog Day. This shit happens every year, Mark. That's why I'm not surprised. Right, so we can skip the rest of that part of it. Dorrance Armstrong. Um, he considered a plethora of players for the spot, but Armstrong ultimately won out because of his 23 cap hit. According to other cap, Armstrong will account for 7.25 million this season. Believe it or not, that's the seventh highest on the team. Was Dorrance Armstrong the seventh best player on our on our team? No. Okay. Which is one of those things when I look at it and I'm like, he got $15 million from Washington? Bye. I, I, I'm happy for you, bro. But people will say, we lost North. I'm sorry. That's too much. So, in the grand scheme of things, only Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence, Zach Martin, Stephon Gilmore, and Tony Pollard have a greater cap hit than Armstrong. Okay? But that one's not that bad. And then we go to Michael Gallup. The Cowboys signed Gallup to a five-year, $57.5 million contract last offseason while he was rehabbing a torn ACL. The deal included a $10 million signing bonus with $27 million guaranteed and an average salary of 11.5. It was a risky investment, and Gallup didn't reward the team's faith as he posted the worst season since his rookie year in 2018. In 14 games, Gallup caught 39 passes for 424 yards and four TDs and posted uh, more yards the year before with five fewer games. So, here's the thing. I'm looking at a guy there saying that Dak the cap, cap killer needs to go. Well, listen, anybody that knows anything... And it's not just a troll knows it's not that anybody else. You're a troll. You don't you don't really know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not saying you know, you like or don't like you can not like Dak, but he is by no means uh, the reason why they have having problems with the cat. Oh, it's oh, but I missed it. 
Happy New Year! It's the NFL New Year. It's for uh, There we go. Happy New Year. There Happy it is. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, Laura Cook. Shout out to Laura in the house. We are on live now early because this is actually the beginning of the league year where everybody has got a shiny new piece, somebody that's not been in their building as a player except for, wait for it, the Dallas Cowboys. So we are here. To trash the Cowboys. Isn't that why mm. we're here? Linda, a Cowboy could have had him for 4.5 million. No, I think it's 8 million per, Linda, not 8 million total. For who's that? Uh, Henry. Yeah, Henry got yeah. eight. Yeah, it's a three year deal, I think, but it's really well, guaranteed. They can get out of it after next year right. because of the years and stuff. But that's what, after, that's what everybody has to worry about it. 49er fan fans, what's up, Brian? Take one of our detail. We, we <laughs> take one of our defensive tackles. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> Listen, we're getting close. There's going to be a lot of people. Still to be released. Uh, I just saw where Mike Will it was a Mike Williams from the Chargers was, was released. Yeah. They are so far over the cap. Um, you know, now they're not, but they just saved twenty million by releasing Mike Williams. I'm hearing uh, Bosa might be uh, gone. Well, they, There's going to be people to come on uh, the market. But Bosa's been injured a lot the last couple of years. I'm not that saying I want him, but I'm just saying he's a very talented number. man. You know, uh, you know what I mean. Look what. Uh, Look what um, uh, Russell Wilson, let's ride. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he took a veteran minimum to play with uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers this year because of all the money he made yeah. <laughs> the last year or so. So right. you so may be able to get a bargain. So thank you, 49er fan fans, for thinking of us. I appreciate it. Um, again, this I'm not surprised at any of this. At I... Again, I'm going to reiterate that there's not many pe there's nobody that has been signed other than Henry that would have been a good fit for me because I don't want a young I I don't want I'm not going to name his name all right so don't get all upset people I don't want a so-called back for multiple years that ridiculous money whoever that name is I don't want him I want my guy in this year's draft because I love me some running backs in this year's draft okay. dynamic backs. 6'1", 223, hits the hole, runs a 4'4". Four, four. Pause. Yeah, there's a couple of those guys I want. You can have your mega million guy now who always gets hurt. Again, to each his own. At least you're in the ballpark playing the game. We're still sitting on the sidelines playing with our poker, or like our chips, like Mark says. So, But there's not anybody that's really gone. Daniil Hunter was a pipe dream. Uh, everybody uh, anybody, we want is anybody is, the first couple of days. I, I think the is Cowboys, still out there. The Cowboys, um, you know, where we're not we signing dumbled. big name free agents as a red badge of honor. We're just not going to Hunter Renfro's out there. Give me a little bit of Hunter Renfro. I mean, th there's a lot of people out there. So again, I think we're going to be fine. I would love to have my fourth round pick. That is still is sticking in my crawl. Land. That. In this draft, with all the talent I'm looking at, we're going to be at the draft in a little less than six weeks. Okay. Uh, I, I want that fourth-round pick. Yeah, I want that fourth-round pick, everybody. I mean, there's some talent here. So we're going to be fine. Uh, I would say, as we see here today, Eagles have jumped up to in the lead. They are in the lead. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. What what I say in March don't mean squat. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done for everybody. Um, but again, we could be um, that laughing stock. That's fine. Um, Jacksonville sends a 2024 third rounder after not extending Calvin Ridley. So who sends? Who the hell? So what happened to Ridley, everybody? I'm watching the uh, ticker. Drifting Cowboy John, why would a free agent want to come to Dallas unless we pay him overvalued like Jacksonville does? I think we live in a bubble thinking free agents actually want to come here. Yeah, Drifting Cowboy, they're not going to come for nothing. Now, I will say, depending on where they're at in their career, I think Gilmore will be back here cheaper than he could probably get on another team, basically because he wants to stay. Now, not that much cheaper. Um, but, you know, hey, listen, 
It is what it is. We the ones, as an Eagle fan, I almost feel bad for the Cowboy fans. This is crazy. We're used to it, we the ones. Shout out to your team for going out and making some moves. But I just said I would rather draft and sign yeah, one of these lower guys as far as running back. You guys went. Listen, let me just say this about Barkley. If Barkley can do what Christian McCaffrey did, where Christian McCaffrey could not stay healthy in Carolina, went to the 49ers and has stayed healthy for it relatively. If Barkley does that in Philly and all of a sudden stays healthy for the next three years and plays 16 games every year, then you guys just hit a home run. If it's the same as it's been where he seems to get nicked up and he kind of fades halfway through the season, then it was a horrible contract. But at least you guys are playing the game and I get and I commend you that Brad, um, I would say they want AJ Dillon first. Uh, they're looking at um, uh, Freeman in Chicago. I want no parts of Freeman. I don't mind AJ Dillon for what he's going to be, Brad, because we're still going to go get that young guy. Um, but like I made the video about Ezekiel Elliott. They are contemplating. You're hearing Jane Slater said they haven't brought him up. But, hey, Jane, they're telling you what they want you to know. I, I mean, just to let you know, Jane, you they're feeding you information and sometimes false information. I think we had it first here about the three million running back. Now you're starting to hear it. Put the pieces together, people. Put it together. We do get some information before uh, the locals do. So, um, but be that as it may, as Mark likes to say, Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones are still waiting for a phone call from players. Jamie Flores, yeah, right. Listen, and I don't know, I don't know who said it. I I'm think sorry. it was somebody on ESPN. Every it was an ex-player who said it. I I can't think of his name. I was watching it the other day. They all said at some point every player wants to wear the star on their helmet. There's something. Uh, about it. It's just the prestige of being, and I know the Eagle fans like want to throw up, but that's a fact. Most players, it's it's not just bargaining. Well, you know, here's the even these rookies being, that are coming out, they all want to play for Cowboys because there is a prestige, but that star is not as, it doesn't shine bright as it once did in my book is, anyway. Though, see, Brian, here's what it is. It's visibility. If you go, everybody become, wants to be on that think about big this. time stage. Think about this right now. You can be a kicker in Dallas and have your own show. You can go to other teams and people might not even know who the quarterback is. You're right, Jody. Okay. People don't know. You know, we all know all of our offensive linemen by name. Okay. People. Listen to the Cowboys. The Cowboys always have reporters there being America's team. You're on TV more than any other team, whether you're winning or losing. The biggest games being viewed on TV are always the Cowboys. So Always. You know, Love them or hate them. The only problem with the Cowboys is you're, you're not getting that Super Bowl ring. And they would, and you, you would make a name for yourself. They want them there because the ratings will, they'll, uh, it'll set the new ratings by a long shot just by, yeah, that's just how it works. It's, okay. So but I'm over let, that. Let me, I'm let over address, that. Okay. So let, let me address uh, the allegations. Here's what we have as far as Dak Prescott goes because, see, the problem is, is we are a sound bite in a, or a headline. Because a lot of times I'll do experiments where I will put something in the title. And I'll talk about something different in there just to see if people are actually watching the video. Because people will comment and say things that I know they haven't watched the video. What's up, Ez, man? So I'm seeing somebody saying Dak is accused of rape. Okay, well, here's what happened. Dak Prescott gets an extortion that basically says, you know, if you do not pay us $100 million, it's we're going to go out... And make this story public. Now, I don't know if anything happened or not. Allegedly, uh, Levi McLaren, his attorney, said there was a consensual relationship there. And now they're being extorted. 
the, uh, Dak Prescott's people filed on Monday a lawsuit against this person for defamation. Before they filed that, they went to the police department to report it. So this was reported to the police last week. If you are being extorted and you think you did something, I don't know that you're going to the police to report it, where they are actually opening up an investigation. Now, the fan ended up having the accuser's attorneys on here, which I'm kind of surprised that you put that out there because you don't know, you know, I mean, I could accuse, you know, Brian of stealing something from my house and stuff, but it doesn't mean it necessarily happened until there's... I did, actually. actually. I think I stole a shot glass. Okay. Because you owed me one, so I took it. Okay, well, that wasn't... But you told me to take it, but, you know. Uh, you okay. did, you know. But uh, what I'm so saying you, is, you I know accuse, what you're saying. You can accuse anybody of anything, and <clears> if <throat> it ends up being that it is a false allegation, then it kind of looks bad on the fan for putting your putting that on there. So you know, again, this is one of those things that maybe let the legal system until we actually have you know real news on it, because the attorney goes out there and literally slanders the heck out of it, and now by court of public opinion. You got people saying, well, he's a rapist. It's like, wait a minute. And this, to me, is the same thing. as That's why it was wrong for 105.3 to even entertain anything at this point. I was on 105.3 earlier after Mark told me. I didn't know what I was watching. I was kind of getting ready to go out. I had to go out, get a haircut. I went to the gym. So I was I was listening to it, and I didn't know exactly what Mark was talking about. He said, oh, did you hear what happened? I'm like, I kind of heard Sean saying something about and then they had the attorney for the uh, accuser uh, number one you shouldn't be doing that on many levels yeah. nobody knows anything i understand that you know there's a possible victim but let's not forget that you are innocent until proven guilty in this country let alone the flagship station of the dallas cowboys should not be talking about it. It's just wrong. Anybody that was arguing with me in the chat, you were wrong. Not to mention that said same quarterback is in a co- is in a contract negotiation. So exactly what are you trying to accomplish here? Just like I told Mark, I'm not that familiar with the details to make anything because I don't want to look like more of a fool than I already am. Something, You know what I mean? That's, I just don't know enough about it. What I know is keep my damn mouth shut until we learn more. That's what see, I know. And 105.3, okay, yeah. I love watching your shit, but, but that was wrong. shame on you. And that's where the whole spin control. But see, here's the thing. And see, people don't understand the power that's out there because Mike Farello said and this this is what actually happened in 2015 he said you know well the cowboys are working on a deal with you know uh des bryant and things out there there might be a tape out there that's 10 times worse than ray rice <laughs> we're still waiting okay? for it right that's that's what he <laughs> said and then you had people you know all of a sudden what there's a there's a tape out there a demon tape uh, you had uh, people saying all of a sudden, well, I heard TMZ is going to pay a million dollars for it. And Adam Schefter was asked, you know, what about this tape? He said, well, listen, we, whatever we've been working on is not ready and maybe never will be. Who knows? You know, you got to be careful on those things. Some people can talk about videos. They can talk about this and they can talk about that. The fact of the matter is it doesn't mean anything. It's really not that fair to Bryant, right? No, no, actually, I'm sorry. This is the wrong person. Until you have the facts in line. But we spent a long time trying to do that. The fact of the matter is, yes, we've worked on this story for an awful long time. We never felt comfortable going forward with the information that we had about the, an alleged video. It may be out there. It may not be out there. What's on it? What's not on it? We've known about it for months. We've never felt comfortable enough to go ahead and say anything and run anything pertaining to that. So when you hear that, that sounds like, oh, my God, you've got information you've been working on for months and you're not comfortable putting it out there. And so all of a sudden, people still today think that there's a tape out there. There was no tape. And so now that this attorney's out here saying that this, this, and this happened on 105 The Fan, you have given him credibility because now you are on a Dallas Cowboys sanctioned radio station, you know, basically slandering that person. Brad Wright, you're right. Guilty until proven innocent. 
And on the same day today, Jerry Jones's lawsuit was uh, was kicked out, was dismissed. His paternity suit. Oh, was that? I didn't oh, see you... that come across. Okay, so he he won something. Yeah. Nice. Well, he won the fact that we are the last team that's actually made an outside signing. So he's winning. Um, you're 100 percent right on that undercut dog. Un- dog. No one knows what happens yet. Happened yet. Nobody does, and that's the thing. It's you have to wait and see what happened. You know, we can go through. Did did Michael Irvin's situation not teach anybody anything? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, because people were, you know, Michael Urban, he's a scumbag and this, that, and the other. And, you know, here it is. Suit gets kind of thrown out um, or settled. So you got to be careful on some of this stuff. I purposely kind of stayed away from it. You know, yesterday I kind of mentioned a little bit of it and didn't get really deep into it. Law Nation and... uh, uh, Boss Cowboy and CFO Sports and stuff, they were really talking about it last night in the live stream and apparently got the air of our ire. Is it ire or air? Ire of the fan. The ire. That came back and responded and said that, you know, these content creators are morons and idiots. So that's where we are with that. So instead of us actually focusing in on the Joneses screwing the pooch in free agency and literally signing not any of their 16 free agents or signing anybody to replace them or getting any money to do so, we're infighting against each other. We've got fans in here saying Dak Prescott is innocent. We've got fans saying Dak needs to go. He's a rapist. And here it is, Catboy and his Marketplace Grill trainer slash... Capologists are not held accountable for the screwed up contracts that we have. Anything to add on that? Um, no, you pretty much nailed Xavier it, man. This whole was released. Who the Dolphins? Dolphins are not going to be that great this well, year. They've released well, released everybody again. They're like the Chargers. They're like a lot of people where they are. You know, just like the Niners, you've added pieces, but you've lost some pieces. Niners signed Eric Hendricks, so Eric Hendricks won't be coming to the Cowboys, but Eric Hendricks is shot. I'm kind of glad. But they need him because Dre, you know, Greenlaw tore his Achilles and they couldn't afford anything more than an Eric Hendricks. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's with the Niners. Bang, bang. Uh, that sucks. Thanks, Corey Pearson. We don't know enough, Corey. That's my thing. I mean, like you disagree on what's going on now with Dak or Dak in general? Again, I'm a Cowboy fan. If if there's somebody else out out there, fine. But right now, I mean, what's our options? You know what I mean? So um, it is what it is. Lady Libra says, if you're assaulted, you don't send a letter for money. You send... From 2017, this was like allegedly. You know what I'm saying? This is where... And supposedly it... Where it happened, it's already past the time that you could uh, make any money off of it. I don't know that the lady... It's funny because I did hear this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she asked for $100 million right off the bat. Now, it is past the time to do any sort of civil lawsuit. So the only thing that could happen would be criminal. My and then Dak went right at her with a hundred million, or I guess whatever, how much of a lawsuit mm-hmm. back at her, and now you're hearing the attorney come out, and you. I think what's going to happen is now that they can't make money, it's past the civil mm-hmm. time supposedly. I did hear that, so now they're going to go for a criminal thing, not to actually follow through, but to hopes that Dak will give them something to stop it all so i was going to ask mark about that um i want an honest opinion from him though that's the thing honest opinion um, about calais campbell 38 year old calais campbell he's a defensive tackle would you bring him in here because i said earlier on a video that i would if we, if my guy dj readers in detroit outside of that you're not you don't have too much more left so readers off the board Calais, he probably won't make much. 
So. Oh, he won't make much. Um, you know, <laughs> th- th- this is one of those ones that I- I'm just wondering, are you trying to just piss me off today? <laughs> no. no. Um, but I understand what you're going to say, but we got to look past that and what can help us now. Is he still able to help us? He is a role player. I mean, he's a he's a That's role all player. I need him for. I mean, you remember who was the big white dude that we had a few years ago that played defensive tackle that yeah, ends up a, leaving? He was here for a couple of years. I think he got hurt. Damn. And actually, then we didn't resign him. I can't think of this okay, guy. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. He actually had 56 combined tackles, 32 solos, and six and a half sacks last year. And he's 37 years old. I think he's 38, or he'll be 38. He'll be 38. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. You I know, think we we could use his leadership. I don't know if it's a Leroy Glover, probably somebody a little bit past a, a Leroy Glover, but I like him. Big body. fits. I think he fits good in the Mike Zimmer mold. I don't know. Does he? Does he not? I don't know. I oh, mean, he, he, I, Listen, he is a mountain of a man. Incredible NFL man of the year. But I mean, you know he's cheap, I, right? Well, so he, he would that's, have to be at this point. But, but he, it, and that's an improvement over I'm going to say that's, that's an improvement what I'm over saying. anybody on the line that we had. Um, yeah. But he is. You know, Put him next to Mozzie, man, let, let me say you know, on certain okay. downs. I want you to understand something. We them boys. He was playing when T.O. was still playing, bro. Okay? Yes. He was playing when T.O. was still playing. That's my quarterback. He was playing when Wade Phillips was the coach of the Cowboys. Okay? That's to give you an idea of how long he's been here. Now, I wanted, I said, listen. What's up, Chiz? I said, listen, this is a guy to break the bank for. I said, I know. That's what you said. I know. 2017. And what I heard from people was, oh, man, he only gets like six or seven sacks, you Mm -hmm. know, a year. Mm -hmm. He's old and everything, right? That was 2017. The next year, he was runner up defensive player of the year with 14 and a half sacks. The next year with Jacksonville took them to the. I think next to Mozzie, he might be a good fit, you know, a young guy, you know. But I don't think at this point that he's a full time start. He would be a rotational player. Yeah, just a rotational guy. That's all we're looking for. I guarantee the only one that could run the franchise worse would be Do- would be Donald Trump. Uh, yeah, well, listen, I don't even care if you like Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he, he, do you do remember, you know, he did say that he, he laughed at Jerry when he bought the Cowboys. <laughs> he said, a, you're throwing your money away for the 100 mil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jerry Jones is laughing all the way to the bank. I'm sure that's still a joke over their yacht parties. Well, I'm Donald, was, you remember that? Thing. You told me it would be a waste. You know what? If your thing is is we, we like the, the publicity and stirring shit up, you've stirred up the Twiz. shit. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Bree Dak, this 304. That's be crazy. What's that mean, Twiz? This 304s be crazy? Oh, my God. Thomas Jefferson says, Brent Urban. He played with the Ravens last year. Brent Urban. We Bang. That's Brent the guy. Urban. Yes. That That's all we're looking for. Because you're going to draft somebody at some point in this draft. Mozzie oh, all of a sudden is put. I don't know if everybody heard. Mozzie's now putting his weight back on because Dan Quinn was starving a guy. He's feeding them like turkey ranks and vegan uh, Rosie O'Donnell hot dogs. You know, foot long or not. This got no meat in it. You know, and that's no good. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, so, Carl is right. He could mentor the uh, the youth, basically. Yeah, that's kind of what I uh, would, was thinking when I saw him on the list. They won't. They won't. Well, here's the thing, Shane Baker. You, you're right. It's it. We're in a rebuild. Yeah, be careful, okay. Thomas you, you, Garrett. You can say we're in a rebuild. Hose, but okay. Here's the Those hoes be crazy. I got you, Twiz. Here's the problem of, of <laughs> Thank you. we're in a rebuild is look at the guys that are going to have to rebuild it. Okay? Look at the contracts that we screwed the pooch on. Look at you. Look at you. Are you signing documents? Look, he's Uber eating. He's like McCarthy on the sidelines. He's he's ordering food. He just ordered, uh, he just ordered some street tacos from the, the food cart that's down the street. Trying to... Keep it PG game time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got gotcha. you. Boats and hose, Twiz. That's actually a good one. Boats and hose. Because they're on a boat. You get it? 
Thank you. Um, all right. Where were we? I'm sorry, people. Um, that's why you trade Micah and CD Lamb. Okay, but here's the thing. If you can't get one or two, because uh, as we pointed out here, we were talking about redoing CD Lamb last year and Micah Parsons last year. And now we're kind of like, well, we don't have to do Micah Parsons now. The price is not getting any better, people. The price is not getting any better. And as you see other teams, rightly or wrongly, freeing up capital to be able to try and make some moves, there's no way in the world that you can feel like um, if we re-sign Zeke Elliott, that's better than having Derrick Henry. Honestly. Are we looking at that? Yeah, what are you doing, yeah. Ryan, that looks kind of goofy there. What, 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 are you dancing? <laughs> you don't know what I'm listening to. I don't know <laughs> My chat's going nuts. <laughs> I, no, I played a drop while you, while you were talking. Oh, oh, I got dear. some toys here I'm messing with. Let me have fun. I'm listening to you. I, I'm just saying that when we bring in guys like Brent Urban or we bring in guys like Don Terry Poe and other people are bringing in like Eric Armstead, I don't know how you can think that you can compete. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know um, you can look and say, well, da Dak is the reason. Why. Bro. Jane Slater just he said a little while ago that they're working on something. I don't know what that day. is. She's been saying I know, all day. I know. Speaking of uh, Jane Slater. What about Jane Slater? Uh, oh, you're doing another no, I just I just played boats and hose. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so, again, Mark... I'm going to roll with you with this. It's been a shit show, like it always is this time of year. And, and if you look at anybody on NFL Network, ESPN, they say Howie always does it. I got news for you. At the trade deadline, Howie's going to do something else because his team may need something. And he's going to, he's going to put everything out in front of him. Why? Because he wants to win. The difference is the Jones want to win it their way. Just like we're like yeah. we're starting to hear in 2025 because of all the dead money pile up that we're mm -hmm. yeah that we're establishing, that's going to be the rebuild year. Now, rebuild isn't what people think it is. Rebuild is Dak will probably be here. CD will get his deal, but all the other deep, you know, we were deep last year. Pause. We were real deep, mm -hmm. but I mean. You know, we had a lot of deficiencies, too. So it's all these contracts are coming up at the same time because Catboy allowed the player. They were given fifth-year options and making these players play on them. Instead of making it, listen, Mark, you could draft somebody in the first round and get a fifth-year option. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to make a decision by the third year. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have to wait because you can to save a little bit of money then. When if you sign them now and stretch it out, you have to, you know, That's you put the all problem. the contracts on That's the board, the Mark. It's a big-ass whiteboard. And 2023, Dak comes off. 2024, see, he, it's not hard. And I'm a effing mailman. But for some reason, they can't do it. And well, now, maybe they need yeah, to hire now, a mailman. you know. Okay. So, G. Lo, he says, I have a legitimate question. As you know, I'm an Eagle fan, but I appreciate good football talk. Does Dalek trust Lance if Dak was suspended by the NFL during an investigation for this? Um, first of all, <laughs> if they were to suspend him, they wouldn't have any choice but to trust him. But I don't think that this is going to be that. Uh, sorry, don't see that happening. You don't um, see what? That he said if Dak gets suspended because of this allegation. No, 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 no. No, we're not. We we have. If you've noticed, uh, people over the recent years, we have moved on from the Zeke Elliott. You're guilty. Mm -hmm. a BS when he was never th that, was that was thrown out for everybody. Yet he had still lost what six, seven games of the season because yes, of it mm -hmm. and money. So um, we've gotten away from that. You're seeing people. What they're really trying to come down on is that is this gambling stuff. You, it, there's been a lot of Cowboys and other players that have had some incidents. Just look at Sam Williams. Mm -hmm. He had his DUI. He hasn't missed any games. Right. So, right. you know, they have lightened up on all that, especially now in this day and age where you could just you try and sue somebody for money. It's ridiculous. 
Uh, see, I can see already. Look, Dak needs money to pay the settlement. Okay. Um, all right, Here we so, go. Uh, and, and this is exactly, exactly. Th and this would be one of those things that I look at and say, because you heard somebody said um, that the Joneses signed off on it, you know, that they were okay that the way that they presented it or whatever. If that's not writing on the wall for you to Dak to say, you know what? It's time to go. Let me go in. I want, yeah, place. I want to be with an or an organization that has my back unequivocally, at least until they know more information. But listen, I'm not even going there. We haven't heard nothing from the Joneses. As much as I don't like Catboy and, and and Jerry Jones, I think the one thing he is is, is ultra loyal to his players over the years. There's a reason why well, Dion still has a relationship with Jerry. A lot of these, look at Michael Urban, loves Jerry. I mean, let's, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, let's, they're still on the boat party and they probably, are just now hearing you know the news so again it's only a big deal because somebody opened you know filed a uh, a frivolous lawsuit on the surface uh mm -hmm. but dak did come out and say it was a consensual relationship so it was not as though there wasn't nothing at all they were obviously an item at some point uh you know my thing to you is why didn't you know why wasn't there something but <laughs> a couple of years ago me regarding this while we're waiting yeah that I, I agree with you on that one why didn't somebody you know what you're, you're telling me seven years later and your thing is i want a hundred million dollars but she never contacted the police on it okay um yeah dak would have everybody's support if he was the fifth or sixth highest paid quarterback and not the highest paid quarterback what difference does it make i mean whether it's three million or four million dollars more or less a yeah. year I, i'm sorry i don't see how you can say we support you because you're not the highest paid what does that say about people that say we don't want to see you paid as the highest paid and do we believe that he is going to be the highest paid forever um kirk cousins was the highest paid jimmy g was the highest paid Derek carr was once the highest paid okay did that bother anybody right there? <laughs> that those guys were once the highest paid quarterbacks? Dak doing his hip thrust pregame workout oh, to some Lord skanks. <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> Sorry. Completely this is all comical to me. This shit's all comical. He hasn't wanted shit to be that highly paid. Jody, again, that's... He hasn't, you know, it is what it is. He's won a lot of games. He hasn't won a lot of playoff games, but he's won a lot of games. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is what it is. I think we've covered the Dak thing, you know, as far as how much he's going to get paid. We're, <laughs> they didn't go out and get Trey Lance just to, to you bring him in as a backup. <laughs> they're either trying to get his value up to trade him or they're going to use his ass, in my opinion. So we'll see. Well, here we have Jane Slater, of course, has been talking all day that let the Cowboys cook. I have no reason to believe they are baking that I have reason to believe they are baking something in the kitchen. Told right you. Now. They're baking something. Yeah, and people are like, Jerry Jones is gonna burn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You got a pot on the stove with no water in it, okay? So yeah. I yeah. Texas Eagle, what's wow. up? Uh, Texan Eagle, what's up? Thomas Garrett, the female is scorned. She pissed off because Dak's woman had their first child and everything is good for Dak. Well, you know, when we're all sitting, having a drink or whatever it is we're doing, you know, we're all yucking it up. You know that's what we're saying. But they can't, anybody around the team or especially the radio station should really just not do anything. Because now is not the time to make comments unless you know something. Because anybody could file anything at any point. And as soon as you say something, especially as a radio station, even to let somebody have their say, if it's all lies, you're going to turn somebody. It's like turning a jury, you know? It's like you can't discuss the case. <laughs> and, you know, it's just not healthy for anybody. That's all I was trying to say. See, here's the problem. There's perception and there's reality where people will assume stuff. So this is a tweet um, from Jeff Kavanaugh where he was responding to somebody else. Um, he says, in a nutshell, 
Dak is holding us hostage in in free agency moves. That's Jeff a, said that. Th- this is what somebody tweeted. So Jeff said, oh, not yeah, at no, all. Yeah. The Cowboys could extend him, restructure him, extend Lamb, restructure Diggs, restructure Tank, or Steel, etc. He's not. Dak is not holding them hostage. Yes, he's and not. If he holding, heard Dak. See, that's the, he was very open to a deal not top. It, it, at least how I took it was he knows what w- Dak knows where the Cowboys are financially, and he knows it'll help Dak and it'll help the Cowboys by having a long term deal. Why it hasn't happened yet, I'll never know. Okay, because that, Stephen really Jones is a jackass. Send. Insurrectionist, that's where you cross the line, bro. Keep that up, and we'll just play. I, and I'm sure you'll go out and make another profile, but come on, man. Let, What's he saying, to, man? Uh, is he talking even, about me? No, he's talking about Dak. Dak's uh, huh? well, I, I, yeah. I, I took it down. Um, so this is the problem that, and this is what I told you was going to happen. Didn't I tell you that what the Cowboys were going to do is basically say, you know, we were going to go all in, but see, Dak wasn't yeah. He wasn't a team player, and, and he held us hostage. And so at the end of the day, here it is. The Cowboys' mistakes are missed, or excuse me, aren't looked at. They're not looking at, you know, why is it we don't have money? Why is it we have to cut a Michael Gallup and take a $13 million dead hit? Why is it that we're still paying Zeke Elliott this year or that we're paying Tyron Smith, guys that aren't on the roster and haven't been, you know, for Zeke two years then? People aren't looking at that. They're looking and saying it's Dak Prescott's fault. Why are we sitting here with the only guy who's actually played well enough that you say he gets another contract and a max contract as opposed to the guys that we've paid that are stiffs that you are eating money on. That, that's the thing I, that, that, that literally blows my mind. None of the contracts they've done with anybody else have warned them getting another contract. The one that does, oh, we can't win with that guy. We got to get rid of him. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Xavier Howard was officially released. We knew it was coming. Where is he going to land? Oof. Well, we know it's not Dallas. Wow. Oh. Because we don't sign anybody. We them boys. Yeah, well, no, we ain't them boys. I don't know what we are, but we ain't them boys. Who cares about football at this point for him? Football. Eric Armstead's out there. I uh, would have interest in him. Cowboys ain't going to uh, do that. I'm just telling you who I want. Um, if that's the case, we never can have a conversation because they're never going to do anything. So, so you know, here's, until- here's where the interesting part is. Uh, Ernie was talking about this with Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith is considered the best free agent still out there. No team will allow Tyron Smith not to practice every week. No team will give Tyron Smith Didn't I say that? the quality back shots in the locker room before the game. To loosen him up. No team knows Tyron Smith like the Cowboys. Bring him back now. Ernie also says that the he Cowboys, Cowboys. re signed and A.J. Dillon is absolutely cooking. I fully believe that Isaiah Davis of the North Dakota State, he's running back number one, fellas. Great players are not released. Sometimes Cowboys, they can because of their a salary cap. Um, you know, Brian Dawkins at the Eagles, he should have never been released. You know? Mm-hmm. Or, so there's a, there, I'm sure there's been other players in our past, you know? Um, I don't think he's what he was, Cowboys. I'm just saying he's a, he's a, he's a very talented guy. Somebody's going to use him. I agree. It won't be us, though. Oh, no, I'm sorry tweet he'd like to see happen for the Bengals. My bad. Okay, he has not. All right, so is there uh, any hope? I don't know if it's 60, Corey. Uh, uh, I think it's more like 55, but I'm guessing. You know, I'm, it's all a guess to me. Oh, so we hmm. shall see. Right, so what's well, going on? Is there any moves, people? Put it in a chat. No, I don't see nothing. already. Everything's done. Yeah, I'll have to big, know that for the, next year. Now the dust is clearing. It's settling, okay? All the big-name players are done. And everybody's Dallas is around. coming off the boat. They're getting on land again. 
from the outside looking in, Tyron Smith is probably the best option out there for Dallas. I mean, who else could Dallas possibly get for the deal that's that friendly? No, thank Draft you. Draft a guy. Draft a guy in the first round. That's Damn. what I want. Let Dak go. Get another comp pick. Okay. Pay on. him. This is kind of important. Too. I'm, I apologize, people. Oh. Hello? Not too bad here live. No problem. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Is this about the package? Oh, okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad it's sitting there and supposed to uh, something happening to it. Is there a way that they could send it to the post office and I pick it up at the post office? Don't trust the post office, Mark. <laughs> that way, post office will lose shit. Oh, wait, no. Texas Eagle, Dak deserves this money to y'all. Let's see here. Who do we got here? Okay. Cowboys signed their new water boy. Makes quality scent. Uh, makes quality H2O. Yeah, I can't play that one. I got monetized for whatever. I don't understand. Yeah. I like boobies. I can, I, I can do that one. <laughs> Where else? Yeah. Jackass. Cool beans. Okay. Cowboys find the new world. Oh, yeah. People need to understand if that contract is not touched, they are not resigning him. Yeah, if they don't re do something by, obviously, this offseason, he gone. He gone. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Let me get the Marks chat and see what's going on there. There you go. Cowboys hater, hater. As soon as Urban said... I'm suing for hundred million. That shit died too. Dies too. Yeah. Yep. Cowboys have no free agent okay. clause. All right. Peace out. <laughs> Tad on the phone. Not yeah, that's Tad Black. Yeah, it's Tad. No, it's actually Joseph. Um, I've got um, a package coming from him. Um, Dak's uncle. No, Joseph. Oh, uh, 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 the guns. Yeah. The guns. Yeah, I told him how to They're do in it. Tennessee. Jamal Adams to Dallas. No, thank you. Jamal Adams oh, is geez. cooked. No, that no, was the best it, move we never made. Everybody wants to talk about free agency when we didn't sign Jamal Adams. That was the best move we never made. He's sucked ass ever since. Oh, uh, Lori. Breaking news. Cowboys resigned the grass keeper. Gr ground yeah. keeper. Oh, boy. The groundskeeper. We got the 94-year-old George Toma. Oh, you know it's going to be wet. Or oh, the field, that is. Extending CD and Mike is important. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Chuck? How are you, buddy? As soon as Urban Just said, Cowboys. Tad is causing so much guy. trouble. Uh, listen, it's, it's not just Dallas. It's it's Mike's uncle. It's it's Tad. It, it's all over the place. It's... Pat Mahomes' wife. If you win, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. If you don't win, it bothers you. Okay. I listen to Cowboys Spaces broadcast on Twitter. People are pissed. Fans are rethinking their fandom. I hate the Joneses. Byron B. I hear you, Byron. That's in your chat. Yeah, it, it, and, and, you know, I, I can't say I blame them. I, mean, I don't know how you can feel like they're all in, so to speak, and they've done nothing. Uh, Jimmy Johnson has a lot to say now. I, I don't know about that, Cowboys. I think that was all a publicity stunt. We'll see. As long as they agree with what he wants, maybe then. Yeah, you know, if they agree with what Jimmy wants, then they'll make it relevant. Holla. So we the boys. Officially released now. Who? Eric Arm Armstead. It's like, okay. We yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. So it's officially. Bro, I did bring that up. And Jimmy G, officially releasing Jimmy G. You know, I, I'm old enough to remember when people said, man, we need Jimmy Garoppolo because he's a winner. Well, he he's, beat us in our house, so that's kind of why. Yeah, okay. Eagles denied direct contact between Hallie Roseman and Saquon. Hold up, hold up. Eagles denied direct contact between Howie Roseman and Saquon Barkley during negotiating period. During the 52-hour pre-free agency negotiation period, teams can talk directly to agents. They can talk to the player unless the player has no agent and represents himself. 
They're relevant today because an item in SI.com suggests the Eagles DM Howie Roseman spoke directly to Giants running back during the negotiation window. So that's an issue. Okay. So if that is proven that uh, that happens, you will lose a draft pick. So Howie Roseman's cooking, but he ain't cooking that much. <laughs> Howie fucking up. Okay. So they're cheaters. We the ones. What up, my man? Thank you so much for the super chat. Maybe the Cowboys can trade down in every round due to lack of free agency and pick up a lot of players in a draft like the old Patriots teams. I definitely want to trade down from our first pick and get another top 100 pick. Um, the only way I wouldn't want to do that is if um, uh, the big boy out of Georgia is there. Uh, I would take him at left tackle. If Powers Johnson's there, I, I don't think he's going to be there. I would take him at center. Outside of those two players, outside of um, the big boy out of Georgia and Powers Johnson, I would try and trade down to the bottom of the first round, get an extra 100 pick, and let's ride. So go. thank you so much. We the ones. Appreciate you. Go ahead, uh, Mark. Um, I just called you. So you were talking about Hunter you that. Renfro being released. Um, he was a $13.7 million uh, cap hit for them. Patrick Walker said that Dylan is in play, I believe, but I also repeat what I said on Cowboys break. I wouldn't rule out the possible reunion with Zeke Elliott. Yeah, I brought. I did a video on his his interview earlier, and um, check it out. Yeah. So, in other words, nothing's going on. Tyron Smith, don't be surprised with a reunion. Um, Mark's got way too much going on as far as to get back in on the Pink's free model. Pink's free model is gone. I told you, primetime Phil has the. Uh, the highest bid on the Pinks free model right now as men. They're going to put a Pinks in South Florida. So, good luck. We can't I don't afford know if the, waters yeah. in G. Well, <laughs> not, not, with the current, not with the current staff that we have that's not creative. How we vision. I love it. <laughs> I love what the Eagles, the Eagles fans are so happy, man. And that's fine. I That's what, honestly, let's, and Twiz knows this whether he admits it or not, he knows this. What they do now means not much, but it's fun to be a fan of a team who's given you something, right? Mm -hmm. They went out and brought C.J. Gardner-Johnson back, like I told everybody they were going to do. They traded for the edge rusher slash linebacker from the Jets. Huff. Mm -hmm. Hell of a deal. Saquon Barkley, the most expensive and most dynamic running back in football, Often injured. That aside, they bring him in. They are rolling. They're. I mean, right now, I just and want to feel still, excited about my team going money. into the draft and still have money. Okay, and they still we're, have we're money. We're sitting here watching our. They players just signed their signed kicker elsewhere. through a multi-year, twenty-four million dollar deal. We keep watching our players sign elsewhere and keep hearing we're broke. We're broke. You know, this is like we don't hear anything. Uh, you know, it's not like we're hearing we're broke. This, we don't hear squat. Tell me we're broke. Mm, 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 mm. This is what like would we it take to get Reddick, though, Chiz? It's all going to the carnival, you know. They're going to get the cotton candy. They're going to be playing all the games and riding all the rides. And <laughs> that, 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 you that, ain't got that, no that. money. You, you can't go. Or you can go, but you don't have any money for any cotton candy. You can't get on any rides. That's what this is like, man. Even though we're the rich kids, we broke. How is that possible? How are we the boys and we are penniless? Uh, yeah, I Black know. Bolt, I'm with you. The morale on this team has to be in the toilet. It's interesting that we haven't heard anything from Micah on this. You know, He's probably on vacation. That nobody's chimed in about what's going on. Packer fans in here acting like they've been doing big things the last six years. You, sir, you just beat the Cowboys team on the wild card. Every team in the last 29 years. Oh, kiss my ass, Philadelphia. Uh, I'm convinced Jerry wants Secure and Coach Prime next year. Well, that's, you know, Mike Fisher was going off today and saying that uh, that's the plan as the Cowboys are looking to rebuild next year. And you 
it's kind of hard to argue that they're not when you think about everybody on a one-year deal contract. Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. I don't know how else. That's exactly work. what it sounds like to me. Oh, boy. This this feels <laughs> like a pity party. We them boys. You know that? It, it honestly feels like a pity party. I know. It's a circus. Um, Go Cowboys. <laughs> Cheater Howie, right, Brad? Yeah, I think Cheater Howie. So I need news. I I, mean, I need some nothing. some hot news. What's there going on here? Nothing. Brock Bowers. That's what they're talking about on the NFL. Uh, Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia. Love him. Ain't gonna play in Dallas, but if he's there, if he somehow ends up in our pick, that would be a guy that somebody would want to trade up for. He ain't making it to us, but you know, you never know. It's a tight end. The tight ends tend to drop. So. Uh, this thing will blow up next year with Lance as QB one. Yeah. The only way Lance plays is if next year is if um, Dak gets hurt. Dak will play next year. Well, you're gonna have to sign him to a contract. Well, Dak's under contract for this year. Yeah. No, I'm saying for for the following year. No, I'm talking about next. I mean this year. That's what I mean. This year. If you're talking 2025, yeah. If you let Dak get to free agency, he's gone. Um, and he should, because that's basically showing you guys are going to let me get down here to the end again. Okay, all right, no problem. Bowers going to the Colts at 15. Either that or a uh, a cornerback if a good one's there, Cowboys. So looking around here, trying to find some interesting stuff. Let's see, it's... Aaron Rodgers might be our vice presidential elect. With RFK Jr. running, he might pick Aaron Rodgers as his vice president. And that should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll do mushrooms in the Oval Office. <laughs> Bucks officially bid farewell to Shaq Barrett. Titans resigned Julius Chestnut. All right. Well, not much here. There is nothing. Not much. Here. It's it's a dead zone here. Yep. And uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to get out of here in a few minutes. Still got some more work I need to do around here, and this is just a sad pity party as we go through. We trash Dak. Uh, the organization is. Um, doing absolutely nothing. The trolls are having their way, and so on. And I honestly, uh, you know, I, I keep telling myself in the back of my head, this is the way it always is in the off season. But somehow this year, it seems a little bit worse than usual. It seems worse, but I think people are, I think it's, I don't know if it's reached the yacht, but it has reached the star. If you watch all the DallasCowboys.com shows, they all know how upset the people are. Mm -hmm. If you watch Cowboys storyline at all, Nick Eatman, that's what he does. He takes phone calls, and most of the calls are ripping them for everything. So they're hearing it. Um, Titans signed Mason Rudolph from the Steelers. Okay. Here you go, Chiz. Um, I think you know, for the first time uh, in a long time that I can remember that they are really going to hear it. I wonder... You know, I know Mark was talking about go. Well, I mean, we'll see what they do. And you were talking about going to training camp. You know, wouldn't it be fun? It would never happen, but it would be fun to see that place half empty. Like you know, nobody cares. But unfortunately, people get so excited with the Cowboys and their love of the Cowboys, they just are yearning for a winner so much that they'll just spend their money on the crap sometimes. And it is what it is. Um, let's see, DMV was the one that let me know about everything that was going on with Jay Tuck and stuff mm. this morning. I, I had, you know, I, I heard that yesterday when we were live streaming that he would, you know, the attorney was on the fan and I was kind of like, I think I'm going to stay away from this one a bit, but you know, it's sorry that this shit is just crazy, man. I wish we could actually just focus 
on the Cowboys trying to be the best team that they can be. As Cowboys opposed- love this because it's going to take the focus off of their inactivity, most likely. You know, they don't care. They're already on record. You they know, don't care if it's negative. DMV, I will pro- say, here's what I will actually say because um, I think that from the time we lost with the Packers, I can't honestly say that there's been anything that has given you hope other than when Jerry Jones said we're going all in. Other than that, everything that has happened over the last month plus has been negative. There is nothing on here that makes you feel like we them boys or that they're even trying. And I will say that, you know, you have been, I have been, I know, you know, like I said, Jay Tuck and everybody, I will say that new media holding them accountable and reminding them of the stuff that they've been doing uh, for the fan to kind of come back this morning, that maybe some of that shit's working. People say boycott the stadium. That's not going to, you know what? They, we could all about boycott it. There's other people that don't fill that place. They're going to get the revenue share. They're still going to be worth, you know, 9 billion plus, you know, and still rising. If the commander's, with as bad as that team has been forever, can still be one of the top five valuable franchises with that dump of a stadium. The Joneses ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah. We want to believe, yeah, black uh, um, insurrectionists, yeah, we want to believe that we are not as inept as we actually show and that we are literally not doing a damn thing. Yeah, we want to believe that. Unfortunately, we are stupid. Shame on us for believing. Matt, don't you're right. there's stop. nothing positive going. Boycott Dallas. Hunter uh, Renfro already been picked up to the Texans. Wow. That was quick. <laughs> look, Thanks, Chiz. Look, look, but DMB said, no, nah, don't boycott. Use that money to poo them. Get your money's worth. There you go. There's too many fans to boycott the stadium. You're right about that. Jerry's laughing at y'all. He knows Mark will buy and throw more cowboy teddy bears after losses. Okay. Jerry's laughing at y'all. He knows Mark will buy and throw more cowboy. Oh, okay. Bumble didn't cost shit. Grabbers cost the Super Bowl. Well, Chargers release uh, wide receiver Mike Williams. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, he'll find a home. Maybe the Patriots. <sighs> I'm surprised Eagles uh, signed Devontae Parker. The last three years, he was last in the NFL each year in win win rate and uh, separation uh, as far as wide receivers go. Last year, he was 132 out of 132. Devontae is cooked. He, I'm not sure. I guess, you know, that's all they really wanted. But um, Dave, What's up, Mark and Cowboys nothing. fans? What's up, Andre Giant? Dave, you're right. Day three, still nothing. This is unreal. G-Lo, I heard something about Howie Roseman did something wrong with the Barkley deal that could have uh, lose the Eagles a draft pick. Um, that's what we've heard, that he contacted them too soon. You're not allowed to... T- uh, contact them on the phone. You could go through the agent, but you can't contact the player direct. So how we, you know, this is a rumor. Who knows? Yeah, we'll They see. have a thousand picks, so whatever. Jack sending a third round pick to Atlanta as composition in Calvin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was interesting because they didn't re-sign him. Jacksonville gets a pick. I think number 79 overall. That's pretty impressive. So that was to their advantage not to re-sign them. DMV. DMV. Yeah, Go ahead. You're right. Um, Jerry's kryptonite is people thinking that it was all Jimmy. Believe it or not, money isn't everything. He wants his credit and to be loved. Yeah, exactly. Even as the one that DMV, if you remember correctly, after the Super Bowl, the first one, he was out. And, yeah, listen, I'm sorry. It was boats and hose. Uh, he was out. Running and gunning. This is where he had his child, which, listen, I don't care what anybody does in a personal life, you know. He just won a court case today, right, Mark, you mm-hmm. said? But it was around that, it was during that time period where he was going out, just sewing up his oats, flexing, and that's when Jimmy Johnson and him could not, yeah, Jimmy was like, yo, the, 
the I mean, everything should be going to the players and the coaches. It shouldn't be, you know, and Jerry wanted to take uh, you know, ownership of that Super Bowl, basically saying, you know, without him that they couldn't have won it. Um, yeah. You know, and Jerry's like, ah, I'm out of this uh, circus. So that's exactly what happened. He got the hell out of Dodge. Remember, that was about the time period everybody thought that Jerry was going to be the coach on the sideline. That's how much he was talking his shit. So, uh, and and you know we're getting clowned by by the teams like Philly Eagles fans. What y'all? What gave y'all the indication that the Cowboys were going to do anything different from? What yeah, they I agree. Do? There's no there's just because Jerry said he was going all in. Jerry's got you once again. Yep, and he's probably enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, he's probably on a boat. We'll be going with, all in, and every one of them suckers fell yeah, for it. He's probably on a boat going nuts. He's. Boats and hose, man. Let him eat cake. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, each pick is valuable from my experience. Howie Roseman loves to draft picks because they get great uh, get great trades for them. Uh, watch the famous How About Them Cowboy speech. Jerry wanted to speak, but Jimmy didn't notice. Mm-hmm. Never believing the Joneses again. That's probably the best thing right there. Don't stop believing. If we boo Jay everywhere, it'll drive him crazy, trust me. Yeah, you're right, DMV. I think this is as loud. I was telling Mark, this is as loud as the negativity. It's actually, yeah, if you watch the DallasCowboys.com stuff, they're hearing it big time. Mm -hmm. So it's louder this year than it has been. Is it going to make a difference? No. It's not going to make a difference. What will be interesting is, you know, I, I'm curious what's going to happen with um, with with Sean on the, the fan and things, if they're going to get more blowback and stuff on there. Yeah, that was interesting. Cowboy Hunter. Very Hunter. interesting. Dak will leave after the season, and he'll leave you with all the happiness uh, and leave with all of the happiness in the world. Yeah, this is where I look at it and say, Dak has all the incentive in the world to play lights out because he knows he'll get paid. If he ends up having a season like he had this year and he's a free agent, psh, okay. <laughs> I guarantee you somebody would be more than happy to show him the love because this isn't like Peyton Manning coming back after having uh, you know uh, his neck fused together or something like that. This isn't Jimmy G you know, going from San Francisco to the Raiders. This isn't Kirk Cousins having a torn Achilles going to Atlanta. If you've got yes. a, a top five quarterback who's a free agent, who has been talk about of, free agent frenzy, sh- <laughs> that will be, be fighting on the, the biggest free agent deal in the history of football. Yeah, and maybe the dumbest move that any team has ever made. But you know what do I know? I'm a guy with the day job in football. Some people are saying that Dak should go ahead and waive his trade clause, and I would say, no, why do that? Take the money. Well, nobody's going to trade for him unless he were to sign a long term deal. So it would be kind of useless to me to waive for it. For me, if if this thing goes south, um, nothing makes it hurt more is to see something you lose do great. If Dak Prescott basically gives him the middle finger and plays out his contract, plays lights out, and then walks away and leaves you with $36 million in dead money and then goes on to a team that's loaded? Yeah. yeah, Ooh. Ooh. That would hurt. That would hurt. Because that would be, I'm not going to say as big as you letting Jimmy Johnson go, but if Dak Prescott were to leave and win a Super Bowl someplace else, like Matthew Stafford did, that shit would burn. Yes, it would. And Russell so- Wilson had a no trade clause, says Cowboys. Mm-hmm. He did. That's a good point here, Cowboys. The reason the Hurts jersey sells, it's because the one represents their only significant win. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. A little something, something. You guys are winning free agency, though, if I had to rank the team. So, congrats, birds. You guys are winners. Black Bulls. You guys are winners. The people are more, infor- people are more informed. Everyone knows 
The noise about Dak is a distraction from the bum-ass front office. That's what I've said. Because here it is. The Cowboys have done absolutely positively nothing, and half the people are only talking about Dak Prescott. Well, Brian, you got anything else to add before we get out of here or before I get out of here? I don't know if you're going to continue going on. No, I'm going to stop because I got a live stream tonight. I figured an hour and a half was going to be good from the get. So I'll stay on another five minutes. But, um, yeah, uh, we're going to live stream 8 o'clock tonight. Me and Prime Time are hump day live. And we will uh, be talking some more free agency and what's going on. Maybe something will happen between now and then. And uh, it'll be fun. Queen signing a three-year, $41 million contract with the Steelers. Who? Patrick Queen is going to the Steelers three years, $41 million. Wow. All right. Wow. Wow. That's a, good, that's a good move there. Yeah, it was. Let's see, Dak will not have the teammates to play anywhere near lights out. That is the point. Pioneer, you say that, but we're going to have CD. You have Brandon Cooks. You have, I love our young wide receivers that are going to get a chance now with Gallup gone. Jalen Brooks, I told you before last year even started, I love me some Jalen Brooks. Um, And who knows what they do? There's a... Let's just relax a little bit. Everybody needs to relax. There's nobody that we didn't get. Was Derrick Henry going to put us over the top? No, I would have loved Derrick Henry. It would have been a perfect fit with whatever rookie we end up getting. But well, now, here's the thing. listen, here's the thing. now, if we get A.J. Dillon, bring back Zeke, uh, whoever, at least we'll know what type of running back we have and what type of running back we, we could get, get in a draft. Yeah. You'll look for maybe somebody a little different. Mm-hmm. A good one-two punch. So, everybody just relax. We want everything now. I get it. We want the shiny object, but we're saving money. Every day that goes by, you're saving more money. You get A.J. Dillon for two mil, that's a steal. Oh, shit. What's the matter? Here he, You really are looking for the bright side. Calvin well, Bowie signing with the Texans. Texans yeah. have li- re- literally loaded up. Yeah, Eastside Harold is lights out. Yep, he he's definitely having a ball right now. Oh boy. Four years, ninety two million for Ridley. Hell of a just don't bet anything. Or that was just yeah, just don't yeah, bet just yeah, bet on your squad, bro, or anybody else. Trey Benson, Cowboys, you know you know that's the guy I want. I told your dad that today when he texted me. CD, Cooks, Tolbert, Ferguson, Trey Benson. Give me Trey Benson, please. Yes, please. I'm all in. Problem is we'd have to trade down. Is he going in the second round? We ain't going to get him in the third. So. Jane Slater said she's run down. No calls have been made to Zeke Elliott. Not yet. Not yet. You don't have to call to get you. You're still talking to AJ Dillon. They'd rather take Dillon. You'd rather take Dillon right now. Get a little more tread on the old tire, as they like to say. J.K. Dobbins. You know that's the guy I said yesterday. Corey Pearson. J.K. Dobbins on a cheap one-year deal, coming back from an ACL. Was only 25 years old. Love that. Love it. I don't know where he's at physically. They would need to find out before signing him to anything. The Cowboys roster is loaded. If Mozzie steps up, it's a wrap. Oh, shit. There it is, Cowboys. Mm-hmm. I agree. Anybody that uh, that we want to keep, we still have an opportunity to keep. We have an added. I mean, I guess we have an added who that everybody wanted. Who? What's the one player that everybody wanted that we didn't add? The problem is the teams in our division did add. That's why it seems like it stinks. Mm-hmm. It's not that bad. Again, I can't stand Jerry or Steven, but it's not that bad, people. Okay. Boats and hoes. But all right, everybody, I'm going to roll out of here. I'm sure Mark is going to roll out of here, too. Of here too. Don't forget, 8 o'clock tonight, I Happy will be New live year. with Primetime Phil. And, uh, Mark, I will talk to you later, my man. Peace out. Late.
All right, good people. This has been a crazy week, to say the least. It has literally just been awful. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, it's a sad state. We got the whole Dak Prescott situation that's going on between the contract and uh, being extorted. Um, 105 fan literally calling us morons um, here and stuff. The Joneses doing absolutely positively nothing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there we have it. So with that being said, I'm going to go out here and play on the railroad because maybe that'll be more fun. All right. <laughs>